Welcome students to this uh, demonstration of uh, titration of uh, potassium permanganate by oxalic acid. This experiment we have discussed in the lecture uh, few minutes ago and I am going to demonstrate this experiment here with the <coughs> standard oxalic acid solution that was provided uh, by the lab assistant. I have given you the concentration of this uh, oxalic acid solution during the lecture. And this is the unknown potassium permanganate solution for which we are going to estimate the strength. And to do the reaction what we need is this 4 normal sulfuric acid solution to acidify the oxalic acid solution before titration. And as we have discussed in the class that uh, we need to heat this mixture of oxalic acid with uh, sulfuric acid to about 70 to 80 degrees centigrade to start the reaction. This reaction as I have already discussed that is a very slow reaction at room temperature and that is why we need to heat this solution. So to start with we first need to pipette out 10 ml of oxalic acid solution using a pipette and a pipette pump which you already have learnt in your previous couple of uh, experiments that was done on acid based titrations. So now I am going to pipette out 10 ml of oxalic acid using this pipette pump. So the last drop we should just touch at the bottom to take it in. Whatever goes with the touching it goes and the remaining should stay back. There is very little oxalic acid staying back and that amount of oxalic acid should stay back in the pipette. So now we need to take 10 ml of uh, sulfuric acid in this conical flask. We should again touch the tip of the pipette at the bottom so that the 10 ml is transferred and little bit of sulfuric acid remains back in this pipette. So now the next step is to heat this solution to about 70 to 80 degrees centigrade on a heating mantle. So while the solution will be heated we will fill this bullet with potassium permanganate solution and as you know this potassium permanganate you can see that it is a colored solution. So we should when we fill this bullet with potassium permanganate we should always note the uh, reading of the upper meniscus for a colored solution whereas in case of a colorless solution we always should note the lower meniscus. So let us go and start 
heating this solution to about 70 to 80 degrees centigrade using the heating mantle. This is the heating mantle on which we are going to heat this mixture of oxalic acid and sulfuric acid. So we should heat it only up to about 70 to 80 degrees centigrade and we should not boil the mixture because on boiling oxalic acid will decompose and produce carbon dioxide. So we should make sure that we only heat it to about 70 to 80 degrees centigrade. So how do we know? We will start seeing that there will be vapor formation at the top of the conical flask and one or two bubbles may come from the bottom. So at that point we should stop heating. So now you can see that the upper portion of the conical flask has some vapor of water and one or two bubbles are starting to come at the bottom of this solution. So we should remove it from the heating and then go for titration. So now we have filled the bullet with potassium permanganate and we have made sure that the upper meniscus is touching zero. And we have the heated solution at uh, below this bullet and we will start titrating with potassium permanganate. Let us see what happens when we just drop the first drop of potassium permanganate to this hot solution. You see that on addition of this first drop of potassium permanganate, the solution contains the faint pink color and this faint pink color persists for a while because this particular reaction between permanganate and oxalic acid is slow. As a result, this decolorization takes place long at long time. Now you can see that the color of permanganate decolorizes immediately as soon as it falls in the oxalic acid sulfuric acid solution. Now you can see that we have come to very close to the equivalence point and that is why the decoloration of permanganate is taking a few seconds than before. So at this point one has to be very very careful to add only one drop at a time. See, this is the faint color of the end point which persists for about 30 seconds. So this color should be reached with one drop and not any extra drop. So now let me see what is the bullet reading at this point. This bullet reading is exactly 12 ml. So we will use this bullet reading for our calculation. So now what we need is we need to reproduce this experiment at least three times to get concurrent bullet readings. So I will again pipette out a fresh solution of uh, oxalic acid and uh, sulfuric acid in a new conical flask, heat it and then show you the titration once again. So now we are again ready to do a second titration of uh, permanganate with oxalic acid. We have already taken uh, 10 ml of oxalic acid and 10 ml of four normal sulfuric acid, heated it to about 70 degrees centigrade and we are going to start this titration from the point where we ended in the last titration that is at 
12 ml. So once again, just to demonstrate, you see after addition of the first drop, the faint pink color does not decolorize and it stays for a while. Even when the solution is hot, this faint pink color continues to stay for about 30 seconds and then it decolorizes. So this initial color is due to the slowness of this reaction. So now when I add the subsequent drops of permanganate, the color of permanganate will decolorize immediately. You see, immediately on addition of drops of permanganate, the color disappears. So this indicates that the Mn2 plus that is getting generated during this titration is catalyzing this particular reaction between oxalic acid and potassium permanganate. Now you can see that we have come very close to the end point. So at this point taking the decolorization takes place a few seconds. This decolorization does not happen immediately. It takes a couple of seconds and it tends to stay for longer and I am sure in the next drop this color will come and will not disappear even in 30 seconds. So this is the end point that I have shown you in the previous uh, titration also and what we see here the end point has reached and this bullet reading is 24.1 ml that means we started from 12 ml and this time it has consumed 0.1 ml extra which is of course acceptable variation in a titration. So we will do this experiment once again to get the third reading and take average of these three readings for our calculation. So now again we have taken uh, 10 ml of oxalic acid and 10 ml of sulfuric acid in this conical flask and heated it to about 70 degrees centigrade and we are going to start this titration once again from 24.1 as the starting bullet reading. So again you see that if I when I drop just one drop of permanganate the color the color stays for a while and then disappears and now on adding every drop immediately the color is disappearing so it is well established that the Mn2 plus that is getting generated during the reaction is catalyzing this reaction. Now we, you see that the color stays for a fraction of a second. So we are very close to the neutralization or equivalence point. So we should only add one drop at a time and see whether it decolorizes immediately or not.
see this again with one drop the color persists and this is the end point of this titration so once again let us try to see what is the bullet reading and then you note it down and use it for your calculation the reading is 36.4 so we started from 24.1 that means it has taken 12.3 ml so you have one reading as 12 the other one is 12.1 and the third reading is 12.3 so you can take average of these three as your tighter value and do the calculation and determine the strength of this permanganate solution. So this is where we end our today's demonstration. Thank you.